sinner. Let me tell everybody that. I was a sinner. I don't know about you. You probably was not, but I was a sinner. And I appreciate God's grace even much more. Because I know where I was. I know where God brought me from. And I'm thankful to God this morning. See, people forget where they come from and forget they have a past. Are you hearing me? But when you know where you have been and what God has to do, you don't point fingers at people. Hello, somebody. Let me be real this morning. You don't point your finger at people because you know where you were. You were not all of that in a bag of chips anyhow. But God loves you. I got up this morning and God told me, hey, son, I want you to know I love you. And I want you to know I'm getting handsome, more handsome each and every day. You know why? Because he's working on me. And when the, the master craftsman is working, every time he chisel, amen, shape is taking place. I may seem like nothing now, but I, I want you to know, he already declared I'm his masterpiece this morning. And hello, haters, this morning, deal with that, amen. Because regardless if you hate me, God already declared I'm a masterpiece. Does anybody believe that for yourself this morning? Can you say hallelujah? Come on, somebody. Let's make some noise this morning. Hallelujah. God is good this morning. Amen. God is great. Amen. He's wonderful. Sometimes you got to remember who we're serving this morning. Because, you know, through the trials and testing, we forget who we're serving. Sometimes we forget, amen, that the God that we serve, He's mighty, all powerful. He's the omniscient, He's omnipotent, He's omnipresent. God knows everything, He could handle anything this morning. Can you, can you just imagine? I say he can handle anything. He can handle your attitude. He can handle your complexities. He can handle anything. His shoulder is big enough. He have a big right hand this morning. He's able this morning to handle anything. So when we go into a storm, we got to remember who we serve. God is not a puny little God that can't handle nothing. Sometimes he will allow you to go through the struggle. Something will allow you to experience the pain. Yes. But in all on that this morning, I want you to know, he has a plan this yes. morning. He has a purpose for your pain. He has a purpose for your crisis. He has a purpose for your going through this morning. Are you hear what I'm saying, somebody? You know, I help, I'll tell you this because, you know, you want to be real this morning? I have heard people lied upon me and my wife. Lied. Continue lying. And I reach a point in my life, I say, I can't take this in more ministry. I can't take it. Enough is enough. Because people figure because I have a clergy attire on and because I'm a pastor, I should be calm, cool, and collective. And a pastor shouldn't say anything. And I reach at the boiling point. I say, I'll give people a piece of my mind. I'll go call them up and give them a piece of my mind. People want to hear things and carry news and gossip and all kind of thing. Learn the facts first. Yes. Amen. Learn the fact. If you want to be real, let's be real. If you want to carry news, carry news. But carry the truth. Hey. Hallelujah. Carry the truth. Stop fabricating lies upon this church and, and, the, and the leadership and the ministers. If you want to tell somebody some tell them the truth that god is working people are getting saved amen we are working for the kingdom of god we love people amen and i said to my mind i get up a morning and i couldn't take it i said i'm gonna give people a piece of my mind what they could do me leave the church they all some of them already left what they'll do to me my my stand in god is not based on you whether I have a church or not, I'm serving God. Because I know where, what he has done for me. And so I get up in the morning and I couldn't take it. And I, you see a little result of my working out. And I was punching that bag. And, and I was punching it. And I see I'm getting I'm going to give him a piece of mind today. And I was hitting that bag so hard with everything I got. Like if, you know, there was individuals in front of me and I couldn't take it. And God said, hold up. You want to give them a piece of your mind, but I call it to give you a piece of your heart. And God reminded me. He said, son, everything that is coming to you, I'm allowing it to come your way because it's going to make you better. 
The critics, I want you to go ahead and talk. It's going to make me stronger. It's going to make me better. The more you talk about this church, the more it's going to champion the cause of the kingdom of God. Can I hear amen this morning? Don't let the devil take, tell, tell you things in your mind. Like, what are you doing there this morning? I'm in the spirit this morning. I say I'm in the spirit this morning. I'm getting radical for Jesus. You know how some people say they're radical, but they can only talk. I don't talk, just talk the talk. You understand? If I talk, I work it out in the spirit this morning. You understand? Sometimes we breed in similarity and people take advantage of that. But I'm a man of God, called by God, chosen by God to fulfill a purpose. You better watch, and I'm saying it publicly. You better watch how you're talking about this ministry. You better watch how we are talking about this church and talking about the people because things are going to come back against you to bite you. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. You don't like it, you don't like it. You can chew, sick a thing, but God be the glory. I'm preaching this morning. I say I'm preaching this morning. If you love God... Give him a praise this morning. I need to just get that off my chest this morning, but it is in my spirit. It is in my spirit. It is in my spirit this morning. But I've been praying for you. I've been praying for people. I'm standing in the gap, praying for you, praying for people, praying for the needs of this ministry, praying for the needs of the people, praying for your children, your family, your finance, your health. Praying for you. Trying to do the best that God can, you know, is the vision to come to pass. Working behind the scenes, doing stuff. And when you have the enemy comes to criticize you and dung you, it's like you're billing and the sand ballots and Tobias saying, hey, what are you billing? Hey, man, can you stand? You have a fox coming, go throw it on the wall. But the devil is a liar this morning. Hey, Amen. If, if it's hurting you, just deal with it and say, God, give me the grace to go on this morning. Let's go to the second Kings chapter three, verse six this morning. You get quiet on me this morning. Second Kings chapter three, verse six. I'm still in the spirit this morning. It's better I say than anybody else. Second Kings chapter three verse six. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. And the king Jehoram went out of Samaria at the same time and number all of Israel. And he went and sent to Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, saying, The king of, the, king of Moab had rebelled against me. Will thou go with me against Moab to battle? And he said, I will go up. I am as thou art, my people as thy people, and, I am, and my horses as thy horses. And he said, Which way shall we go up? And he answered, The way through the wilderness of Edom. Hallelujah. I want to stop there this morning, this word, the way through the wilderness of Edom. Let me start by saying this morning to the congregation, to the church this morning, God is getting ready to dig out every, dig out this morning, or dig you out of every bondage, Amen. every setback, Amen. and struggle to allow you to walk in the freedom that has declared belongs to you. Amen. How many know that God wants us to walk in freedom? Amen. The freedom that God wants us to walk in is not so much we walk in, in the ways of the flesh. The freedom that we have is walking in the spirit. Are you hearing me? Walking in obedience to God. And when we walk in that freedom, how many know, amen, God, amen, is going to position us to receive everything, amen, he has in store for us this morning. How many know, can we say, can you dig it? Can you dig it? Amen. That was a statement used in the, in the 80s. Can you dig it? 
Amen. There was a phrase used in a, whatever situation. Can you dig it? You understand? So this morning, I'm going to use that phrase. Amen. Can you dig it this morning? Tell your neighbor, can you dig it this morning? Sometimes, in order to dig something, you have to get a fork or a shovel. And so this morning, if I were to say it like this, we need to get out our shovel. Amen. Get your shovel just to let the devil know that you're coming out this morning. Because if you're going to dig it, if you're going to come out, then you're going to have to dig it. Then you have a tool that he's going to use to dig it out. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me this morning? So just pretend you have a shovel and a fork in your hand and say, Mr. Devil, I got my tool, so I'm coming out this morning. How many can say I'm coming out? We are getting ready to dig our way out this morning. Are you hearing me? You're going to dig your way out of poverty, I declare. You're going to dig your way out of depression, I declare. You're going to dig your way out of despair. How many believe that this morning? How many can say dig your way out this morning? Dig your way out of every lie this morning. I don't know per se what your wilderness that you're in right now because everybody... Amen. It's prone at some particular time to go through a wilderness experience in your life. And yet we may not know, amen, our each and every person wilderness experience. But what I come to know, I go through my own wilderness experience just as you. But I'm saying to you, regardless of what our wilderness experience may be, we just let to let the devil know, amen, you pick the wrong person to mess with. When you're a child of God, you got to be make those types of bold statements. Devil, you just can't come in my house and take everything just like if you own everything. Are you hearing me? You can't come in my house. Just imagine, can you understand what I'm saying? The devil come into your house and just take every good thing that God has given to you. How I many know, amen, in the natural, you wouldn't allow somebody to do that. We, we, we do all kind of things to protect that. So people would not come and steal our stuff. We have a lamp system. We have burglar proof. Amen. Some people have shotgun, baseball bat. Some people have a, 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 a planter, so a tree line, a machete, waiting for intruders if they were to come in. Because we're not going to allow people to just come in and take our stuff. Stuff that is important to us, especially our family, as men, as fathers, uh, uh, and family people. You protect your family. You protect. Nobody's going to come and mess with your wife or your children in your own house. And see, we understand that concept this morning. And so we got to understand this and make this bold declaration. Devil, amen, you pick the wrong person to mess with. Because I'm going to protect my people and my children, my family with my life if it's necessary. If God be for me, how many say who can be against me this morning? Hallelujah, that's a bold statement. If God is for me, who can be against me? If I have a shovel or if I have a fork, amen, I can get out of anything this morning. I remember the donkey, the, the man, the family had this old donkey. The donkey was faithful with, to him. And he's walking through the, amen, through the forest one day and accidentally the donkey fall amen, into a hole. The hole was a deep hole. You probably heard the story already. But my point is this morning, he tried to take that donkey out because the donkey was faithful. He tried and tried, but he couldn't do it by himself. And so he went to get the villagers to try to help him out. And they were trying to help him take out the donkey until they realized that they cannot do anything. And so some of the people say, tell the farmer, why don't you just allow the donkey to die? In fact, the donkey is old. He have served his purpose. Just let him die in the hole. And what they start doing is they start taking dirt, the shovels and the fork, and they were digging the dirt around and they were throwing it in the hole. Say, so let's bury him. Let's bury him. Because we can't take him out. Let's bury him. Let him die. I could imagine the, the scene, this picture this morning. And every time they were throwing the dirt inside the hole to bury the donkey. Amen. Every time the dirt fall on donkey back, the donkey shake it off. I hear me. 
Every time he shake it off, amen, he, the donkey was stamping on the dirt. And more dirt that threw on him, he was just shaking it off. More and more dirt, he was shaking it off, and he was stamping with his foot as he shake it. Eventually, it comes so high that the donkey built a platform with the very dirt they were throwing in to bury him alive. Are you hearing me? And this is what life is teaching us this morning. When life throws you a lot of dirt, amen, and circumstances come upon you, you're going to be like a donkey and shake it off and, amen, build your platform this morning. That's why it says to be a successful man, amen, John Maxwell says, is to take the stones that people throw at you and not throw it back at them, but build your foundation this morning. Are you hearing me, somebody? This is what we got to do because life is going to throw a lot of curveball at you. What are you going to do? What are you going to do when circumstances, amen, confront you this morning? We got to say, I got a shovel. How many can say, I got a shovel this morning? Look at your neighbor and says, amen, you can dig it. Come on, you can dig it. Tell him, tell him, tell him. Don't be afraid. You can dig it. I come with a prophetic word today. The Bible says that they decide to go up to the way of the wilderness. And that's important this morning, the way of the wilderness. You see, I have a feeling that there are some people in that place called the wilderness here today. Some people listening they're in that wilderness this morning. In that wilderness. You see, sometimes you've got to understand. Those people who ain't cute to go up to the way of the wilderness. Those people don't mind to get dirty and messy. You don't mind to fight. You don't mind to pray. And have individuals say, bring it on. I don't mind if I had to fight. I don't mind if I had to get messy. I'm going through this wilderness, and it is what if it, this is what it takes, I will do it. Amen. If God wants to bring you to a better place in your life, and he says, if you want to get there, you have to go through the wilderness. How many could say, Lord, bring it on this morning? But not everybody wants to go through the wilderness. They don't mind him getting to the play of success, the place of great harmony, the place where they, they, they have no worries and no problems and no trials and testing. They want to get to that place. But God says in order to get to a better place, we have to go through the way of the wilderness. You look through scripture this morning, amen, servants after servants, amen, that God uses to do mighty and great things had a wilderness experience. You all, we all, everyone who is listening on the song of my voice, you will have a wilderness experience to go through. You see, we don't choose the storm that we go through. God is the one that understands and knows everything. You see, God will allow the storm to come. Yes. We can't change the direction of the wind. Amen. But we have to be able to adjust our sail that when the, the gale forces of the wind come, amen, we could use that wind to carry us into the place of our destiny this morning. You see, it's one thing to listen to what the Word of God is saying. One thing is to listen to the principles, uh, amen, this morning. But the next thing and the most important thing is not just to listen, but is to put the, what you have heard into application in your circumstances this morning. A lot of people like church, they like God, they like the Bible, they like what they're hearing. But faith is not just about hearing the word of the Lord. Faith will come by hearing, but I want you to faith without action is dead. And if what you have heard, you can't put it in practice, amen, you are not going to walk in the victory that God has secured for you and I today. You will have to go to your wilderness. Stop, stop the type of prayer that we are praying. God, take me out. God is not taking you out. If God allow his own son, Jesus, to go in the wilderness, what about you and I this morning? It's good for Paul. It's good for Moses. But what about you? God expects. As we are growing, he is teaching us that you and I will have to go to the wilderness. Some people are going to the wilderness and they are complaining. And like those who come out of Egypt in the Exodus, they saw the mighty hand of God. But when they were going to the wilderness, God was providing, but they become complainers and murmurers in the wilderness. And as a result of that, many of them didn't make it into the promised land. 
Because if you believe God to take you out, you've got to also believe God. God could take you through this morning. Are you hearing me, somebody? God is good enough to save you, but is he good enough to take you through your wilderness this morning? We have got to stand firm, beloved, and understand God is not just to save us this morning, but to carry us through this morning. Are you hearing me, somebody? And that, that the passion got to resonate in our spirit this morning. God is able to carry us through regardless of the storm. We got to prove him in this this morning. Everybody will have a wilderness experience. But what you're learning in the classroom today, church is not just church. When you come here, it's a classroom. And God is teaching you. And many people, if they are not careful, they will allow their mindset of and the enemy negative to carry your mind all over the place. If you are in a classroom and a teacher is teaching and not paying attention this morning, when time of exam come and the test, you will fail. Because the principles that they were teaching you was to apply it amen, to the test. But it's good to be in the, pla the classroom, but if you're not paying attention, it's a waste of time. And we got to see church differently. Stop looking at church as they were just, uh, just coming to fellowship. Yes, it includes fellowship. But greater than that, this morning of fellowship is that we come into the classroom where God is teaching because God is a great teacher. Amen. And he wants us to be equipped for every situation when it arises because he knows that every child of God will have to go through a wilderness experience. Are oh, you me, somebody? See, I have a feeling there's some people this morning, they don't, they don't mind getting dirty. They don't get mind getting messy. They don't mind getting dirt blown all over them. Because you understand, to get where God wants me to go, I have to go to the wilderness experience. Yeah. Are you hearing me, somebody? But when I come out on the other side, you better watch out. Yeah. It's not Santa Claus that's coming to town. Yeah. Because when I have gone through, and I've gone through the process, I could be like Peter. Well, after I've been sifted, I'm capable and able amen, to minister to the brethren this morning. Are you hearing me? You've got to understand that God is only allowing you to go to the wilderness to equip you to be better. So you've got to watch out the devil because I'm coming out stronger. I'm coming out better. I'm coming all radical for Jesus. Are you hearing me, somebody? If you believe that, somebody shout hallelujah. That's what God wants of each one of us. You're strong. We say we're strong, but we've fallen for every and anything. We can't stand up for Christ anymore. We don't stand upon the principle. We're compromising. We don't want to live holy anymore. We don't want to apply the principles of God's word. We are disobedient to God and expect God to bless us. We bite back. Amen. We, we, we say things that we shouldn't say. Do you know when you speak something, you can't take it back? It's gone out already. And sometimes we, we sneer our own self by the words that comes out of our mouth. Be careful what you're saying. Because the reason why some people are in the predicament that they're in, because they take their mouth and they open and they say things they shouldn't say, and they sneer their own life. And you're praying, God take you out. How oh God, God take you out, and you have sneered your own self. God says, who God bless, no man curse. And who God cursed, no man blessed this morning. But I want you to know you can curse your own self this morning. You can bring, amen, poverty to your own life, amen. You can bring destruction to your own life when you do not heed the word and you open your mouth and you say things that you shouldn't say. And then when things that happen, we blame the church, we blame the pastor, we blame people. We blame, we do like our forefathers, Adam, blame God, blame the woman. It, is, it hasn't changed. We have to start accepting the responsibility for the situation that we're in. Because sometimes, I mean, it's because of our own venting and not understanding what we're saying that is coming out. We're sneering our own life. Are you with me, somebody? And the Bible says, amen, that after seven days' journey, there was no water. There's no water. 
Watch, watch this this morning. They're on a journey. They're going through the wilderness. And after seven days, there was no water. What was asked? The question was asked. When they understand that there is no water, the question comes forth, is there a prophet? Now understand with me this morning. If you want water and there's no water, what a prophet got to do with water? Let's understand that this morning. You would question and say, where can we get water? Or where is the nearest stream so we can get water? But to come to a point, there's no water after seven days' journey. And then they say, where is there a prophet? I try to understand this and try to understand and perceive what God wants us to understand today. Because in, in the reality, that when we are going through a, a situation, regardless of what that situation is, I want the church to know every person that is listening. It's not because you're you in a crisis or you a financial crisis that means money is going to solve your problem. We're going to understand because we, we equate that if I have a financial crisis, then money is going to solve the problem. But we're missing it. We're missing it this morning. And I'm not talking about money. Because at the same day, the doctor can say you have a sickness and you can quit your sickness. You got to get medicine. So the medicine will compensate to help him with, your, with your disease or your sickness. So that's the, the fluent mindsets of individuals. Humanity, we think that way. But in God's way, hear what he's saying. There's no water. Where is there a prophet? Where is the prophet? Because I want you to know, regardless of what the situation is or what we are facing or wilderness, all I need is a word from God. Are you hearing me, somebody? A word will take you where money can't take you. A word will do what medicine can't do. Somebody say one word from God this morning. All I need is a word. All I need is a, for a man or woman, amen, to stand up and say, Thus said the Lord. But the church don't want to hear thus say the Lord. We want to hear things pertaining to our situation. About a financial crisis, about a burden, about a health. Speak to me in those areas. Don't tell me about what God says. But we're missing the very breakthrough that God wants to bring to your life this morning. You see, when you're going through a situation, you don't need a lesson right now, we might think. I don't need a three point and a poem right now. You know, I need a word from God. I need a word. Somebody say, I need a word this morning. You see, because I need a now word. Because I have a now problem. I have a problem right now. Is anybody got problem? I got problems too. I need a word for right now because I have problems right now. I am dealing with some stuff so real right now. Is anybody feeling me this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. When you have children that is backslidden and you got a promise from God with no resources to finance it, how I many you need a word? Amen. When God gives you a promise for your home and you're not seeing it come to pass, how I many you need a now word this morning? Hallelujah. I need a word this morning. I don't need someone to be cute now. I don't need to know seven steps, how to get, amen, do seven steps so I could drive a gold Cadillac. Follow the same principles and I'll be driving a, a, a latest model bands. I don't need that when I go to, I need a no word this morning. Are you hearing me this morning? I need a word from God. Somebody say, I need a word. What does God have to say about my situation? Because if he's the almighty, if he's all omniscient, knowing everything, then he must, amen, have inside information. He have inside information to know why you're going through that, know why you're faced with that problem, why you're going through it right now. I mean, he knows this morning. And if I could connect to God and he could tell me the reason why, amen, I can feel a little comforted that God, I will go through because I know you have a purpose in this this morning. How many say I need a word this morning? You see, when I need a word this morning, your opinion wouldn't do. Your opinion or ideas, honey, that wouldn't do this morning. 
I want to know what God is saying. Because you always hear what people are saying. And that people will discourage you even from what the word of God says. But I come to understand. Let me, let me interject a thought again this morning. You see, when God gives you a word, his presence is guaranteed. And that same word that is guaranteed that he's going to see you through, that word is able to bring you through. Hello, somebody. You see, that's why the devil is challenging your word. I know God has spoken to people and they felt the voice of God. They felt the Holy Spirit ministering to their life. But because of the situation, don't forget that word. Because that's the only thing that's going to bring you through your storm. That the only thing that's going to sustain you and give you peace of mind is to hold on to the word this morning. Tell your neighbor, hold on to your word this morning. That's why I need a word from God. I don't need to know what other people are saying. I need a word. We as ministers of the gospel, it's not easy. Are oh, you hear me? It's not easy. And sometimes all we got is to hold on to that word that God has said. Every one of us as children of God need to hold on to the words of the living God. I came today to give somebody a word from God. How many need a word from God? And the Bible says, that Elijah spoke and said, Thus said the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. In other words, make this situation that you're going through, or make this assignment, and when the enemy is coming after you with, make this wilderness full of ditches. He got funny. He have a funny way of doing things. Because if there's no water, seven days pass and no water. For me to go and do hard work that dehydrated me more, I could die faster. I know about you, but when I, I look at some of those um, shows, survival shows, I love watching them. Maybe I learn how to rub two sticks together, fire. In times of difficulty, I learned certain things that if I'm in the forest and I get trapped, what to do? I learned how to make a little trap so I could hunt. So I learned some survival skill. But one of the things that will show you, amen, from the first, uh, the inception of the show is they try to locate water. And they get mechanisms, fire starts so they can purify the water. Because I may be able to survive without the food, but I can't survive without the water. I hear me. There's a thought there. You can't survive without the Holy Spirit in your life. I hear me. The Holy Spirit is imperative and so that you can walk in the victory that God has secured for us this morning. Stop trying to live this Christian life on your own strength and the ideology or the knowledge that you have about what the Word of God says and start giving credence to the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, guide me today. Holy Spirit, help me to say what I need to say. Holy Spirit, teach me that way, oh Lord. Are you hearing me? I mean, no, the Holy Spirit is imperative. Not every believer have the Holy Spirit resident in their lives today. And that's why they're struggling. So, is it water? God have a funny sense of humor telling you, work harder in the wilderness. Because sometimes when we go into a problem, we give up on the faith. We give up trusting. We give up the fervency of our praying. But how many know God wants you to continue? That's not the time to give up, amen, and trust in God. That's not the time to give up believing in God when you're going through the difficulty. That's the time that you got to put the pressure on. Are you hearing me? Devil, you come at me harder. I'm going to pray more effectively. I'm going to submit. I, I'm going to trust God more. Amen. Bring it on, devil, because I know I'm coming out this morning. I know I'm getting through. I know I'm going to dig my way out this morning. It's time, it's time, but we find, amen, to do hard work, amen. We want to give up throwing the show with towel, or towel, amen, and fork, throw it aside. But we don't want to get us to do no work. And could you imagine the mindset? The prophet bring a word. Full the valley with ditches. Not one, brother. Not one. You see, we got to understand whatever God is telling us to do is not for somebody else. 
They needed water. And God needed vessels to pour the water into. If they had only big one ditch, they would say, well, they're obedient. That's not half obedient. It's not obedient. That's disobedient. You want to apply one word here, but you don't want to hold the rest of the word here. One ditch is not going to do when God said, fold the valley with ditches. Because the among the people was in the army and going against him to fight. One ditch is not enough. When God tells you to do something, do it in obedience. Fold the valley with ditches. It could be hard work this morning. And in times when we're going through our greatest struggle, we stop praying. We stop listening to what the Spirit of God says. We stop doing the things that we're supposed to do. And we do other things. That's why, amen, you're not being at peace. Because how many know that God will give you peace in the midst of the storm? God will give you peace in the midst of the wilderness experience. Because why? You trust in Him. And when you trust Him, you know God will make a way for me. God is going to see me through. Amen. If God is not doing it right now, He has a purpose for it. But I'm going to trust Him anyhow. I know I'm dying of thirst. But if He said dig ditches, Amen. I got to believe God. Amen. That if He said dig ditches, it's going to work for me this morning. You see, sometimes God is telling you to do something. And you just believe that it's going to work for you. Oh, God could tell me to do something stupid. But I want you to know God ways and not man ways this morning. God would think the foolish things of this world to confound the wise this morning. I want you to know we got to do it God's way this morning. Somebody said do it God's way this morning. Hallelujah. Send the Holy Spirit up in this place this morning. We got to do it God's way. Stop trying to do it your way. Stop trying to figure it out. Just trust God in, in it all this morning. And he's going to see you through this morning. You think God didn't know that it is painful of what you're going through? Yes, he loves you. Could he listen to the grandmother's cry hard this morning? When you see your grandson going to hell on earth, something happens. The love, amen, for that child. When people are hurting our family, how do we feel? We feel for them. We, want, we wish as parents we can, amen, we, especially when our children were small, and I remember when my child was small, my, my eldest girl, she was small, and she was sick. Amen. And we're doing everything possible. Take her to the doctor, and she was, you know, couldn't breathe. And stuff. I, I say, I wish I could take that pain away. Yeah. You know, I could have never seen myself putting my mouth in somebody's nose and try to pull things out with your mouth. But what are you going to do for your children because you love them? I hear me. What will it do? And just as we understand that we are God's children this morning, you got to understand that God loves you and he will do everything for you. But if God is allowing you to go to it, he has a reason and a purpose behind it this morning. God loves your children more than you. In fact, he gives you them. God loves us this morning. How many know God loves us this morning? Tell your neighbor, God loves you this morning. He loves you. He loves you. The prophet says to tell them, make this valley full of ditches. He said, you shall not see wind or rain yet. So it's not going to come how you perceive it's going to come. This valley will be full of ditches. You're expecting it to happen the way that you want it. I come a long way and I understand it don't happen the way that I want it. Frank Sinatra's song is outdated. We need some new songs, some modern songs. It's not your way, it's not my way, but it's your way, God. Are you hear me? I'm not, it's not going to happen my way. Are you hear me? God is not going to chance it for it to happen your way. God is going to allow it to happen his way. So when it happens his way, he gets the glory. Are you hear me? God is not going to share his glory. God desires to get the glory. And however he's going to do it, he's going to do it so he gets the glory. Are you hear me, kingdom life? God is going to get the glory this morning. He's going to get the glory. It's not going to come by the hands of men. Sometimes we put in our focus on men, on people too much. We have to put our trust in God. 
It's not going to be by ordinary this morning. He says, I'm getting ready to get involved in your situation this morning. Hallelujah. I, I want you to know that right there I could shout. Because God says he's getting ready to get involved in your situation this morning. Hallelujah. I hear me. When God gets involved, how many know things change? See, when God steps in the room, all those soothsayers and every negative spirit that is lashing out, they got to cool it. The bosses are wrong. I hear, don't mess with it. Don't better say nothing. He could hear even your thoughts are far out. So you better cool it. How I many don't understand when you have the presence of God and they stand upon the word of God? I mean, don't matter what the enemy is saying, the devil got to shut up. I mean, you shut some lines mouth up because when you trust in God, I mean, your faith is strong enough to believe God. I mean, the devil don't even have a chance. From the moment that evil thought come and get the hand, Satan. Hallelujah, this morning. God is going to get involved in your situation that everybody, your neighbor, your cousin, your friend will know that this is brought about by the hand of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's going to happen. All those people that have been mocking you and making fun of you are going to stand back and see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I say, God have the final say. And you say, he has sin. Who laugh first, laugh last. Amen. God have the final say. Touch a neighbor and say, God have the final say. He has the final say. He had the final say. Because they are going to know that this was not wrought by natural means. They're going to have to stand back and say, look what the Lord has done. And the Bible said, this is but a light thing. After you dine at church, God will come and say, this is a light thing. You know what you should dig there? When I came out of school, amen, I love construction. I did some, I did some things in school architectural drawing and, and building and stuff like that. So it was in my spirit and my blood to go do that. So when I go now, amen, and talk to the foreman of his job, he said, you won't work. And I tell him what, the, what I did in school and stuff. You know what he man put me to do? Dig hard dirt. And at that time, it didn't have those, those, those um, crane or whatever, backhoe and stuff to dig that. And it's fork and shovel. And I tell you, we were building a three-story building. So could you imagine how deep even the foundation had to dig? So wonder my wife loved roast corn. I said, come home every day with corn in my hand. How many know what I'm talking about this morning? I know about you sometimes when my hands so rough, she said, don't touch me. Your hand too hard. How many know what I'm talking about? Foundation is hard work. And God is saying, Amen, this is a light thing. Can you dig it? That's the question. Can you dig it this morning? If you can, just give your neighbor a high five and say, I can dig it. See, we have to come to a point to understand what you are going through. Amen. It's just a light thing this morning. Because the afflictions, amen, that is coming to us this morning, the many afflictions this morning cannot be compared with the glory that God is going to bring. This is a light thing. I can dig it. You have been threatened. There are many people are threatened and they're worrying and upset. But this is just a light thing. God is getting ready to step into your situation and make it line up with your revelation. Hello, somebody. How I many know that's a word this morning? God will step in and, amen, and make it line up with your revelation. God is getting ready to show his glory. Do you believe that this morning? You got to believe it. If you believe in God to work it out, I mean, God is I'm going to step in so that he will get the glory. You see, things have looked one way, and that's what it is saying right now. That's why we are struggling. But they're getting ready to turn around for you this morning. How many believe that it's getting ready to turn around? God is getting ready to take you into a new season. 
a new time, give you a new vision. Somebody is going to get ready, amen, for a divine reversal. That's a prophetic word this morning. Divine reversal this morning. Hello, somebody. Somebody said divine reversal. Because we got to understand weeping may endure for night. You know, I, I quote that script. There's so much, Minister Rennie. Weeping may endure for a night, but his joy comes in the morning. But I thought if I was serving God, I didn't have to weep. But it was not half a night, quarter night. Was it whole night? Are you hearing me? So there'll be some weeping. You better get your towel out and understand you will have to dry some tears. And some of you are already crying. Nothing wrong with that. Because I understand sometimes God sees those tears and become liquid prayer before him. But let me interject right now. God don't, God don't, amen, do things because of the tears. If you cry, cry. But make sure you have faith to believe what he says. Because God will respond to faith. He'll feel for you, but he's waiting for you to respond to faith. God will work when you start to exercise faith in him. Joy is sure to come in the morning. See, because if you got a shovel, you can get out. If you got a shovel, he's going to turn that thing around. How many got a shovel this morning? If you got a shovel, he's going to turn it around. Can you dig it this morning? Touch about five people and say, I'm coming out. Come on. Let's declare your faith. Come on, do it, do it, do it. You got to let the devil know. Devil, get ready because what you throw me on, what you throw on me, I'm getting ready to dig my way out of this this morning. You thought it was over, devil. You could conk me down and conk me out, but you forgot that I have a shovel. Has anybody got a shovel this morning? You forgot I had your word from God. All I need is a word this morning. And if I got a word, I got a shovel. I hear this. If I got a word, I got a shovel this morning. Is anybody got a word this morning? And if you got a word, it is your shovel. I may be in the wilderness, but I have a word. I may be in the wilderness, but I have a shovel this morning. You're going to be poor your whole life. I don't think so, Mr. Devil, because I got a shovel this morning. Are you hearing this one? You, 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 you're not going to make it. I want you to know, Devil, I got, you forget I got a word from God. And if I got a word, I got a shovel this morning. Any predicament anybody's in, how many got your word this morning? If you say you got a word, you got a shovel, and you can dig your way out, Mr the devil hallelujah as long as got a shovel I can get out and the Bible says that the king of Israel and the king of Judah have joined forces to come against amen to go to war against Moab so they come together to fight but let me say right here you don't go to battle without their being spoiled When you go to battle, you choose your battle. Too many people are jumping in every battle. There are some things in it you just got to leave aside. There's always be war and battle coming up, but you got to choose your battle. Because one of the tricks of the enemy is to engage you in every battle. So you use the resources that you have to fight every battle and they come out with nothing. If somebody come and say, your eye black, don't jump in that battle to tell him off. That don't need jumping and battling in. Black is beautiful. I have eyes, thank you, Jesus, that I can see with those black eyes you're telling me that I have. How many thankful for eyes this morning? If my nose, if my wrong or straight or whatever, it's not my fault. Take it up with the manufacturer. Are you hearing me? If you don't like nothing about me, take it up with him. Is he made me? Hello, somebody. Am I talking to somebody this morning? 
Don't go offended the people telling you about how you look. Amen. The manufacturer made me. And if he says his stamp of approval is better than your words, because when he put that stamp of approval on me, when he made me say, you're a good boy, you're handsome, hallelujah, somebody, everything that he made was good. The American EPA don't want nothing with that. It is good. When God makes you, it is good. So when you choose your battle, you got to choose your battle. And ask yourself, if you're going to fight, is it, is it really worth it? Because some battle could drain you out. I know a lot of people fighting battles are draining them out. They have no joy anymore. They may be able to talk words, but they don't have no joy. It have the words of God have no impact upon their life. You got to ask yourself, what am I fighting for? And the Bible said that Moab has come against Israel. In fact, the very people that are fighting you, mark this down somewhere. The very people that are fighting you are just preparation for where you're going. That's important. See, because this is a God mindset. Because the people that they are fighting are just preparation to where you're going. You have been crying over people that is talking about you, lying about you, coming against you, and trying to hold you down. And you didn't even know it has been a, it isn't a curse. But it's a blessing. That's a revelation God gave me. This is not a curse, but it's actually a blessing. How many could how, how many could just wave your hands and say, Thank you, Jesus? You see, your situation might be look as a curse, but it's not really a curse, it's a blessing. Come on, somebody, it's a blessing. I love this scripture when they say, when people say all manner of evil, ridicule, and despisefully use you, go pray and rejoice, for great is your reward. It is a blessing this morning. Somebody said a blessing is a blessing this morning. Every time they spoke against you, their word was ricocheting off of you. Why? Because you have a hedge around you called the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Are you hear me this morning? How many know that's the greatest force field you could ever have? When God heads are wrong, the devil can't even step in. So the very people that are fighting you are just preparing you. Tell anybody I've been prepared. Come on, I'm being prepared. You see, many of us this morning, you do not know what is in you until you're under pressure. I can stop right there. I'm big and bold and strong. I'm a child of the king. Huh? The devil sees. The devil sees when we make those type of confections. But you only know how strong you are or what is in you is when the pressure comes. That's why don't be carried away with people who are staying and talking the talk. You've got to be able to walk it. Your talk must match your walk. Your walk must match your talk. The people, you can tell what they are made of, the caliber of the individual by the pressure when it comes. Yeah. Unfortunately, many people are bowing down under pressure. And Israel is under pressure and they decide to become offensive. Read it and see this tragedy. How many are ready to become offensive and take everything back the enemy has stolen? The kingdom of God suffered violence and the violence taken by force. I'm taking my kids back. I'm taking my joy back. I'm taking my peace back. I'm taking back my vision. Taking back my health. Taking back my anointing. Taking back my prosperity. 
you got to be able to say, I don't think so, devil. You have messed with the wrong person. Amen. You see, you can only say that when you know yes. if you're connected. Amen. Right. People are making those both declarations, yes. but they're not connected. Yes. That's why in the scripture when it tells you that there were some men, you may just paraphrase, was going to try to cast out demons. They wasn't connected. I know Paul. I know Peter. Who are you? Hallelujah. Yeah? Who are you? Because it's easy to confess, but the devil knows who you are. The devil knows if you have a prayer life. The devil knows if you trust in God. The devil knows if you believe in God's word this morning. Are you hear me, somebody? You think the devil don't know? He knows this morning. Tell your neighbor he knows. He knows you. So how you can come in the devil's face and say, I'm bad, I'm bold, you better mess with me. Let me just give you a little inside information. You're not connected. I say you're not connected. You want to come up with me with and pointing a gun at me? Hey, is that loaded? You trying to be mafia, but it's not loaded? You trying to take me out? And you don't even have a prayer life? You trying to take me out just because you could quote some scripture? Let me have a word for you. I know the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. I know it. I could quote it. You with few words want to come and tell me what you're going to do to me and you're not connected? You got to be careful. Before you walk out of that room, he slap you up and you go home crying. You better be connected. You better be connected. I'm going to stop there today. How many received that this morning? You got to be connected. Come on. I'll continue this some other time. But I need to know somebody. When we're in the wilderness, we got to stay connected to God. The wilderness will prove what you're made of. Let me just share this. We'll just stand as I share this as the team gets ready. I'm going to fast forward what I'm going to tell you with all that I said to capsulize everything I just said. How many know what I'm talking about when I speak about wilderness? Wilderness is a dry place. It's a hot place. It's a cold place. Yes. Do you know in the scripture, the Bible says when the children was in the wilderness, the pillar of cloud was with them by day. That cloud gave them shade from the, the radiance of the sun. Then it says there was a pillar of fire by night. Out there used to be very, very cool. And that pillar of fire kept them warm. Are you hearing me? Now, let me say this to you. When you look at the wilderness experience, sometimes, or most of the time, the wilderness is not by accident. The wilderness has been approved and sanctioned by heaven. That you enter into your wilderness period at whatever time time that God specifies. Because the wilderness experience is to bring you to a place where there's no other resources yes. but God. Amen. And also it's a place where all the other voices are shut out Amen. because you come to a place you have no other help yes. but God. Yes. And sometimes the point that God wants to bring you at is because as long as you have B plan, C plan, D plan, all kind of plan, and you don't have he as major, then he will take you in the wilderness because he wants you to understand that when you trust me with the A plan, you don't need a B plan. Amen. The wilderness is for God to speak to you. And God wants to speak to you this morning. Are you listening? Are you listening? We're in the wilderness. We're heading to war. Holy Spirit is vital, but also obedient to God's word. All that I'm laying out this morning is God's strategic plan. That we don't become defensive, become offensive. We got to take the fight to the enemy. 
we got to appropriate God's word in the middle of our wilderness experiences this morning. And so whatever wilderness that you're in, I can't pray you out. Sorry. I don't have that power to pray you out. In fact, God would not allow me to pray such prayer. But what he will allow me to do is pray that God give you what it takes to go to your wilderness and come out even stronger. That his way will be perfected in every one of us here today. Amen this morning. Let's pull up your hands this morning as we join the team this morning. So here I am. Take me as I know. I'm giving, giving every heartbeat for your glory, for your glory. Here I am. Take me. Every beat of my heart, every beat of my heart, every beat of my heart, God. wonderful spirit of the Lord here today and I want you to know this morning I love you I care about you I care for every person that God has allowed us to minister to whether they here or not well, what I do understand we all go to wilderness experiences in our life and we all deal with it differently but God is saying there's one way to deal with our wilderness experience is submit to him Amen. and to trust him and I pray this morning, as I said this morning, we are not better than anybody. We all need the grace of God. Yes. We all need his help Amen. to go through each and every day of this life journey. 
as this morning the whole concept that started this morning we need each other we don't need to you know poke each other but we need to embrace each other with love because when we hurt when you hurt I feel your pain when we hurt we shall feel each other pain when we go into our wilderness experience it is good to have others praying us through that God will give us the grace to take us through that we will not quit we will not give up if we surrender we surrender not to the wilderness experience we submit to God not submit to the pressure, but submit to God. I ask Minister Renny and the worship team to lead us in this song. This is my prayer. This is my, we are saying that we're in this together. That if we just lift our hands and, and let's just worship God. We have at least five minutes before we leave from this place or until we do communion. And I want you to sing this song with everything. This song is so powerful. I ask those who are watching. Sing along with us this morning. Worship God. Get your bridge for right now. Let's go. You hold my every moment. You calm my raging sea. You walk with me. And you heal all my disease. And you heal all my disease. And I trust in you. I trust in you. Father, I put my trust in you. I trust.
that through it all we will trust you this morning you are with total dependency God God this morning touch every life here today everyone who is watching everyone who is absent oh God wherever they are whatever they are going to whatever the challenges whatever the discouragement whatever the wilderness experience may be God Lord give them the grace God, give them the strength. God, the perseverance, so God. God, Father, go true. Because God, I've come to understand your word is like the anchor that will hold our ship. Oh, God, in the midst of the storm today. God, we got a word from you. And as your children this morning, we need, oh, God, to understand that every fight, every battle, God, every enemy that we fight to do this preparation to where we are going. And so I pray this morning, oh God, pour out upon the lives of your people here today. Pour out upon Kingdom Life, upon all the viewers, oh God. Minister to our pain, minister in our midst of the pain and the hurt, oh God. Reach down in the recesses, uh, oh God, of our spirit and our soul this morning, oh God. And where there's dry patches and dry areas, God, let it rain down in our wilderness, God. You are able, God, to put a door of acre in the middle of our wilderness. That we can open that door, God, and find fruitfulness on the other side. 
God that's like holding on to your word that there is hope, there is peace, there is strength, oh God. There's confidence in going forward, Lord, that things will be better by holding on to your word. Today, God, we lift up every person. Oh God, let the wind of your spirit just blow in this place, oh God. Oh God, let it be refreshing upon the people this morning, oh God. God, make us one this morning. Remove the barriers, the pain, the hurts, oh God. God, bind us together with cords of love that cannot be broken. That God, we pray for each other that we will be our brother's keeper, God. Father, minister to your people here today. Let it be joy. God, we trade this morning, oh God. Every, oh God, oh God, for every spirit of heaviness. And we put on the garment of praise this morning. We give you a praise in our wilderness. We give you a shout in our wilderness. We say thank you in our wilderness, God. We are grateful this morning, Father, because through it all, we have come to that place to trust in Jesus. That we know that it's going to be all right. We know that we're going to be secure. We know that you're going to see us through. Let this be done. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Wave your hands and thank you, Jesus. Will you bring the communion this morning? Very quickly this morning. Hallelujah. Just hug your neighbor this morning. And tell your neighbor, amen, you can dig it. You can dig it. You're coming out this morning. Come on. You're coming out this morning. You're coming out. You're coming out this morning. Yes, he is this morning. I'm coming out. I can dig it this morning. Come on, how many got your shovel ready? How many got your word? Amen. How many shovel? I'm digging my way out. I'm digging out. I'm when digging out. Comes, she oversees. Hallelujah. She oversees. Come and bask in the presence of God this morning. Jehovah knows. He's a peace. He is my peace. When trouble comes. When trouble Jehovah I know He is my peace He is my peace When the trouble comes When troubles come Jehovah you see Jehovah you know Jehovah you know Yes he is Jehovah, you see. Jehovah, you know. You are my peace. When trouble comes, Jehovah, Jehovah, see. Jehovah, you know everything God about you. Jehovah, hear. He is my peace. When trouble, when trouble flows. Jehovah, you see. Jehovah, see. Lord, you know, Lord, you know. Jehovah, He is our peace. When sorrows flow. Jehovah, Jehovah, see. Jehovah, He. He is our peace. In the raging storm, Jehovah, you see. Jehovah, I know that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know. He is peace that passes every understanding. Peace that can carry me, God. Another mile, another day. Oh, I need you. Oh God, you see. Oh God, you know. He is my peace. When 
today. He's our peace this morning. This morning we thank God for what he has done for us today. We just want to do that a little different this morning. Amen. We are our brother's keeper. Isn't that so? We got to pray for each other. We got to love each other this morning. We got to grow. We grow together. God is our peace in the midst of the storm. I want you to know we all will have a wilderness. Pray with for each other. Pray with each other. That we will make it through. Amen. How many are we going to the other side? Amen. How many can dig it this morning? Amen. Say, I can dig it. I can dig I'm coming it. out this I'm morning. Out. This morning, I just want to exchange your glass and your bread with somebody this morning. We can just do this this morning. Yeah, right here, brother. Jesus gave thanks before he broke bread. He said, Take heed, this is my body which is broken for you. What he endured on Calvary, every strike, every pain, every slap, every beard that was pulled, that crown of thorns that was pressed into his head, every lash of the cut of nine tail on his back, was for us this morning. His body was broken for you. In the same manner, he took the cup after supper, saying, this is your new covenant in my blood. As often as you eat the bread and you drink of the cup, you do proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. I want you to know, amen, till whenever that is, what Christ has done for us is unconditional, that he loves us this morning. And this will be the good news that is proclaimed, that God loves us in spite of, yes. that he cares about us. Yes. And if we trust him and we put our trust in him, he's going to see us through this Amen. morning. Amen. As you bow our head, Father, thank you for this emblem. And thank you as Kingdom Life and family can partake this morning. God, I pray that you bless the bread and the cup. And as we partake of it, that the benefits of Holy Communion, oh God, be bestowed upon every life here today. Bless us all as we partake in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's eat of the bread. Thank you, Jesus. Let's drink of the cup this morning. Hallelujah. Amen this morning. When I ask the, and the team to just sing one more song, I want to call all the children right there, uh, all those who are going to school, teachers, and um, everyone that is going back to college, school, I want to say a prayer with them this morning. We want to rejoice also, and that God has been faithful and is good. So I'm going to ask everybody who is going to school, all the kids, all the, those who are going back to college, amen. Come on, we're going to praise God. In high school. Everybody's going back out to school. Come, let's rejoice just for two minutes as they come. I will give. 